a massive, unprecedented attack, Iran fired more than 350 ballistic and cruise missiles, drones, and UAVs toward Israel on Saturday night. We're gonna break down exactly what happened with the Iranian attack on Israel yesterday here on today's show. So stay tuned, I'm Justin, and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. It's even more important now than ever to have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Guys, you've probably heard about it in the, in the news, the Iranian, massive Iranian attack on Israel that happened yesterday. We're gonna be getting into that here on today's show in just one second, but first, make sure to subscribe wherever you're watching. Guys, there's gonna be lots of updates coming out this week um, and following about what happened in Iran yesterday, also just uh, developments in Israel, what's going on in Israel in general, so you're gonna wanna stay subscribed there. Uh, also, like this video, hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the content of the Israel guys that we're gonna be putting out um, shortly. Guys, don't forget about the Israel Summit, the first ever Israel guys summit conference that we are doing in Nashville, Tennessee at the Sonesta Hotel, May 20th through the 22nd. It's gonna be an incredible conference, more important now than ever for us as Christians to come together and stand united with Israel, especially as they're going through this terrible time of war. If you can click the link in the description below or go to theisraelguys.com slash summit to sign up for the conference. Guys, Israel is at war and several of us here at the Israel Guys, uh, me and Luke, we're here in the States uh, right now. We would love to come speak to your congregation or fellowship. We would give an emergency update presentation on what is going on in Israel right now and share with the church, uh, sort of wake up the church. I believe that Right now, there's no, there, the time has come where there's no room for middle ground anymore. Guys, the church needs to wake up. They need to stand up and wholeheartedly support Israel like never before. If you want to have uh, any of us speak, me and Luke are here. Also, Britt and Mac are gonna be hitting the road as well to share about Israel. If you want us to come to your fellowship or congregation, you can email speakingtours at heilvel.com. We'll put the link uh, for that in the description below. We'll put the email address. If you wanna email that to have one of us come and give an emergency update uh, presentation about Israel at your fellowship or congregation. So what happened with this Iranian attack? Everybody expected it. It was in the news. Actually, last weekend, the, the officials and commanders and everyone, they were warning, uh, the CIA actually warned Israel, they were warning that an Iranian attack would happen possibly in the next 24 to 48 hours. Last weekend, it do, did not happen. Again, same thing this last weekend. Uh, they, they warned that an Iranian attack could possibly come in the next 24 to 48 hours, except this time the attack actually came. Guys, this is an unprecedented attack. Never before has Iran struck Israel, have they attacked Israel. In the attack, 185 drones, 36 cruise missiles, and 110 surface-to-surface -surface missiles were fired towards Israel, according to uh, Israeli military officials. 99% of the 350 or so projectiles fired by Iran at Israel overnight were intercepted by air defenses. Thank God for this, for Israel's great defense systems. Of, and this is the crazy part, of the 185 drones, not one single one entered Israeli airspace. They were all downed outside of the country's borders by Israel and its allies, including the United States, United Kingdom, Jordan, France, and others. This is according to IDF's top spokesman, uh, Admiral Daniel Hagari. So thank God for his protection on Israel. They were able, Israel was able to track the drones and UAVs the entire way. It took several hours for, the, for them to get from Iran to Israel. They were able to track them the whole way and they were able to take them out before they even entered Israeli airspace. 
Another 30 cruise missiles were launched and, again, not a single one entered Israeli airspace. 25 of them were downed by the Israeli Air Force. Also, about 120 ballistic missiles were shot at Israel. Uh, Iran's ballistic missiles have a much shorter flight time, around 10 minutes. They're a lot more challenging to intercept. Some of these missiles are massive. Some people, uh, I, I don't know exactly how big they are. Some people saying even up to five stories long are some of these missiles. Guys, th this is completely different though than you know rockets just flying out of uh, Gaza or something. Uh, these are massive high-tech rockets coming out of Iran. The IDF said that the long-range aero uh, air defense system managed to knock down the vast majority, thank God, of the 120 ballistic missiles. A few of the uh, ballistic missiles they did manage to bypass the Israeli defenses, and they struck the Nevatim base, which is the home to Israel's F-35 fighter jets. According to the IDF, minor damage was caused infrastructure at the airbase, but it was operating as usual on Sunday morning, this morning. A handful of drones and missiles were launched, uh, not just for, uh, they were launched from Iraq and Yemen amid the attack. As you know, uh, Yemen officially declared war on Israel uh, prior around five months ago, I believe. So them, as long as Iraq, they launched uh, some drones and missiles, but none of them entered Israeli airspace. The Israel Airports Authority announced the country's airspace would close from 12:30 a.m. So they shut down all the flights, and uh, but I believe that the airspace is actually back open now, as we speak, or as of recording time of this. Video. So thank God for his protection on Israel. We're going to get into a little bit more later about how much of a miracle this actually was. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, he did a video address to the nation. He said, quote, and this is a translation of Hebrew uh, that he did. He says, quote, Citizens of Israel, in recent years, and especially in recent weeks, Israel has been preparing for a direct attack by Iran. Our defense systems are deployed. We are ready for any scenario, both defensively and offensively. The state of Israel is strong. The IDF is strong. The public is strong. We have determined a clear principle. Whoever harms us, we will harm them. We will defend ourselves against any threat and will do so level-headedly and with determination. On Saturday night, the IDF Home Front Command issued new guidelines, including a prohibition on educational activities and on gatherings of more than 1,000 people. According to JNS, also earlier on Saturday, before all the drone attacks, before the big missile attacks, earlier on Saturday, Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, naval forces, apparently they hijacked the Israeli-linked MSC Ares container ship uh, close to the Strait of Hormuz. Foreign Minister Israel Katz slammed Tehran for seizing the Portuguese registered cargo vessel, which is operated by the Mediterranean Shipping Company and associated with London-based Zodiac Maritime. Also, Hezbollah fired a, a bunch of rockets at Israel on Friday night. Uh, as you can see in the video here, Israel took out a bunch of them. And then Israel went in and struck uh, quite a few terror targets in Lebanon. So it was craziness in Israel. Uh, some of our friends in Israel were telling us they were hearing loud explosions, sirens were blaring all across the country. It was quite um, a very intense time in Israel for uh, a while last night. Thank God for his protection on his people. We're going to get into the United States response to this attack. But first, envision a soldier celebrating Passover amidst the chaos of the battlefield. In these times of hardship, Meir Panim emerges as a beacon of hope and solidarity reaching from the tense borders of Lebanon through to the heart of Gaza and touching the lives of the displaced Holocaust survivors and poverty-stricken families. The urgency of their need beckons us to respond with compassion and immediacy. Mayor Panim is dedicated to ensuring that every defender of the land experiences the sense of liberation and unity inherent in Passover. Through the distribution of pantry essentials, prepaid food cards, festive meals, and Passover necessities like matzah, we extend a hand of support across the breadth of Israel. Inspired by Psalm 82, 3 and 4, which urges us to, quote, defend the weak and the fatherless, uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed, rescue the weak and the needy, delivering them from the hand of the wicked, we are propelled into action. 
We invite you to partake in reinstating the warmth and celebration of the holiday for those battling adversity. Be it in an unstocked kitchen, the pain of loss, or the yearning for a family member's safe return from Gaza, your aid insurance ensures no one is left behind this Passover. Your prompt support is vital in affording them the joy and dignity of celebration. Make a difference today by donating to my ear panine. You can click the link in the description below. Let's unite to free them from anguish, scarcity, and fear, making this Passover a testament to hope and freedom. So what was the United States response to this attack from Iran? Well, they were pretty heavily involved in this, uh, this strike back. They were actually took down a lot of the missiles and drones that were flying towards Israel, and they were the ones who warned Israel in the first place as a close ally of them. U.S. President Joe Biden reiterated Saturday night that his administration was committed to upholding the Jewish state's security. A statement from the White House said, quote, Iran has begun an airborne attack against Israel. President Biden is being regularly updated on the situation by his national security team and will meet with them this afternoon. His team is in constant communication with Israeli officials as well as other partners and allies. This attack is likely to unfold over a number of hours. President Biden has been clear. Our support for Israel's security is ironclad. The United States will stand with the people of Israel and support their defense against these threats from, from Iran. And so it seemed like um, the United States was being strong, you know, in their support of Israel. Well, it seems like, unfortunately, that support did not last too long. Axios reported that Joe Biden told Netanyahu during a phone call on Saturday that Washington will not support an Israeli retaliatory attack for Iran's drone and missile assault on the Jewish state, saying they do not encourage an attack, you know, going in, showing strength which is great in the, in the Arab world, which you have to do is show strength. Um, the Biden administration was saying they won't support that. They won't support Israel getting their full, their full right to defend themselves and go back and do a retaliatory strike on Iran. Biden said, he told Netanyahu, quote, you got to win, take the win. Which is absolutely crazy because I believe that Israel has to go in and strike Iran. Um, here with Joe Biden saying that Israel should declare it a, a win, this is honestly hundreds of missiles being intercepted over your capital, over your coastal cities, over your population centers. Uh, you know, thank God Israel had the defense systems that they needed to do, but this is by no means a win for Israel. If anything, this is a win for the for the for Iran, the regime of Iran. They wanted to save face with the Muslim world. You know, they had some of their terrorists taken out, uh, which which started the strike uh, from uh, from Iran. They wanted to show that they have strength um, from the, from the Muslim world. They wanted to show that they have strength, and they were able to attack Israel. But I think they wanted their drones. They wanted their missiles to be taken down so that Israel would not retaliate. Because if their uh, if their missiles, if their drones would have hit Israel, the, the world would have had no choice but to support Israel in uh, going in and striking Iran. What Joe Biden is saying here is crazy. Think of it like this. It would be sort of like a gang. Say a gang goes past your house and they have a machine gun and they unload a thousand rounds into your kid's bedroom. Well, there was some miracle and no, no one was hurt. No one was killed in your house. The police come up. They tell you, no, you, you don't need to hunt the bad guys down. We're, we're not going to hunt the bad guys down because no one was hurt, in fact. And that, that, that's just the craziness of what Joe Biden is saying here. Guys, Israel needs to respond to the intent. They need to show strength. That is, uh, they need to show strength. That's what's respected in the Arab culture, in the Arab world. They need to respond to the intent and not the outcome. Guys, this was a huge miracle. I believe that God stepped in and saved the people of Israel. He saved them and not one single person was killed that we know of from these strikes from Iran. One Israeli Bedouin girl uh, was injured by a missile, and as we speak, I, I believe she's receiving treatment in 
the hospital, but this was a massive miracle that no one was killed from these strikes from Iran. We're gonna be putting out more shows this week with more details about what happened, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more details coming out in the news soon, so we will keep you updated on what happened with Iran. Guys, before we close, we do have an update on the shepherd boy uh, that went missing on Friday. Ben talked about it on his show. Uh, an Israeli teen, Bin Benjamin Achimir, he was shepherding sheep. Uh, it was either Thursday or Friday, I believe, and he went missing. A lot of a lot of people in the community surrounding they came together, organized search parties, and they went searching for him. Well, unfortunately, he was found near the Malachi Shalom outpost, dead, and he was murdered by Palestinian Arabs. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu condemned the heinous murder. He said, quote, we will get the murderers and those who help them as we do to all who harm the citizens of the state of Israel. Guys, just a, uh, another tragic terrorist attack that happened in the land of Israel. Pray for his family for comfort and peace during these hard times. Guys, as we close out, pray for Israel. Uh, stand up for Israel. Raise your voice in support of Israel. They need us as Christians, as Americans, as Westerners, more than ever to stand up for them. A couple of prayer points here. You can thank God that this was an ineffective attack. Also pray for Israel's leaders to have the correct response to know, or to have the wisdom to know what they need to know, whether they need to go in and strike Iran. Also, uh, the leaders here in Israel, or in Israel, they're dealing with multiple fronts at once. Gaza. They, they, the Hamas is still, uh, they, they, they still have several battalions in Gaza, so it's still a threat. Iran, as you saw, the massive strike, and Hezbollah has thousands of rockets aimed at Israel, so pray for Israel like never before. Guys, make sure and check out Meir Panim and the great work that they're doing. You can click the link in the description below if you want to support them. Don't forget to subscribe. Also get the conversation going down below. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know your support for Israel down in the comments below. As always, tune out the fake news and tune in to what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every day, Monday through Friday with a direct connection to the land and people of Israel.